In this video we are going to study RMM models in Python using Jupyter Notebook. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, this is an educational video only and no professional advice is included within it. Also, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, it is important to remember that when doing time series analysis and forecasting, past performance does not guarantee future results. Ok, so let's go into the web browser where the Jupyter Notebook is located. So the first step within the video regarding this Jupyter Notebook is that we need to insert a new cell below and we do so by clicking the Insert Cell Below button. And the first step regarding the code is that we need to import the corresponding packages, therefore we comment this as step 1 which is packages. And we're going to import pandas as pd, we're importing pandas for data frames. Then we're going to import statsmodels.api as sm, we're importing that feature from statsmodels for data downloading. Then we're going to import statsmodels.tsa.state space dot sarimax as sarima we're importing that feature from stats models for arma models and last we're going to import matplotlib dot plot splt for the corresponding chart to run this code lines or this cell we can either click run or we can press shift enter on the keyboard then we continue with step number two which is data for data, we're going to create an object named mData, that's model data underscore obj or object, which is equal to sm feature from stats models dot datasets dot get underscore r dataset, and we open parentheses. First parameter, which is data name, equals to within quotations we have air passengers, comma package, equals to within quotations datasets, comma cache, equals to true. So what we're doing here is the following. We're downloading air passengers object from our package datasets and with cache equals to true means that once we download the data, it saves it locally. So we don't need to go and download it again every time we run the code. Notice that this will download data and documentation with an mData underscore obj object. Therefore, we're going to create a new object named mData with only data, therefore equals to mData underscore obj and we're going to get its dot data attribute. And we're going to convert this into a pandas data frame. So we overwrite mData and it is equal to, and here we'll be using pd or pandas dot data frame and within it parameter data equals to mData and we're going to select its value column. And then we're going to go ahead and set its index with dot set underscore index and within it parameter pd or pandas dot date underscore range in which we have parameters start start equals to 1949 and equals to 1961 comma fr eq or frequency equals to m because we have a monthly frequency and we want to visualize part of this data and we do so with print and m data object we're going to get start head method open and close parentheses so to run this code lines or this cell, now we're going to press shift enter on the keyboard and we can see part of this data, specifically the first five dates and the corresponding values. This is monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands. If you want to read the full documentation of this data, you can do so with print and we have mData underscore obj and we're going to get its dot two underscores doc, two underscores attribute and we press shift enter on the keyboard and we can see the documentation below, specifically air passengers are documentation, which as mentioned previously, it's monthly airline passenger numbers in thousands from 1949 to 1960. So now we're going to continue with ranges delimiting. And we're going to create two ranges, a training range for model fitting and a testing range for model forecasting. So let's begin with the training range. We create the object name T data which is equal to M data, and we're going to select from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 1958, therefore 1958-12-31. So the training range is going to be the first 10 years of data from 1949 to 1958, that's why we see the end at December 31st of 1958. And then we create the testing range, F data object, which is equal to M data, but in this case it's going to start at the beginning of 1959, so 1959 
dash 0, 1, dash 0, 1, all the way into the end of the time series. So the testing range is going to be the last two years of data, 1959 and 1960, that's where we see the beginning at January 1st of 1959. So to run this code lines, we press shift enter on the keyboard, and now we can continue with step number three, which is the RMA model. And for this, we're going to do model fitting within the training range and then model forecasting within the testing range. So for model fitting, we create the object name T model, which is equal to, and here we'll be using SARIMA feature from stats models dot SARIMAX function and within it the following parameters. ENDOG with a training range data, therefore equals to T data, comma, order equals to, and within parentheses we have 0, 1, 1. So this is an ARMA model with zero autoregressive order, one order of differentiation or integration, and one moving average order comma trend equals one within quotations n so we're not including a trend component and we go ahead and fit the arm model within the training range notice that range is delimiting training and testing ranges and sorry max function parameters were only included as educational examples which can be modified according to your needs so let's continue with model forecasting. For this, we're going to create an object named F model, which is equal to, and we have T model, that's the training range arm model fitting, and we'll be using its forecast method. And within it, we have steps equals to LEN, and within it, F data. So steps is the number of steps ahead forecast, and that's the length of the testing range. Notice that ARMA model forecasting is done for the full testing range in advance without using any testing range data. And next we want to convert this into a pandas data frame. So we overwrite f model equals to pd or pandas dot data frame and within it we include f model data and we're going to set its index with dot set underscore index and within it we include f data object and we're going to select its index. So to run this code lines, we go ahead and press shift enter on the keyboard. And the following step is we want to visualize this within the corresponding chart. So we'll be using plt, that's matplotlib.plot. And first we're going to include training range data or t data with its label equals to t data within quotations. Then we're going to include the ARMA model forecast. So plt.plot and we're including f model with its label f model and then we're going to include the testing range actual data so plt dot plot and we include f data with its label equals to f data and in this case with a different line style so line style equals to within quotations dash type of line style and then with plt dot legend we are going to add the legend and the location is going to be the upper left then plt dot title for the chart which is going to be rm 0 comma 1 comma 1 model then we have plt dot y label that's the vertical axis label that's going to be air passengers then we have plt dot x label that's the horizontal axis label which is going to be ear and last, plt.show open and close parentheses. So to run this code lines or this cell, we press shift enter on the keyboard and we see the chart below. So we have this arma with zero autoregressive order, one order of differentiation or integration and one moving average order. We have on the vertical axis air passengers on the horizontal one year. As we can see the solid blue line, that's the training range data. The solid orange line, which is the ARMA model forecast, which was done for the full testing range in advance without using any testing range data. And the dash green line, which is the actual data from the testing range. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is important to remember that when doing time series analysis and forecasting, past performance does not guarantee future results. Okay, so with this we finish with the code file, so we can go ahead and save it. 
And with this, we also finish with this video. Thank you for watching.